Hello, this is Jason. Back with another walk and talk. And I'm uh, trying some more experimental mounting options. I really love to be able to use my uh, Action 5 cam as my body cam. And use my Pocket 3 as my face cam because Pocket 3 has the face tracking and it's much better at focusing on things close and far. But I got my Action 5 mounted on my belt. <laughs> I'm not going to show it to you because it's right in front of my crotch. So it's kind of a crotch cam. You're watching the crotch cam right now. <laughs> uh, so see, see how that works. When it was mounted up on my shoulder, I had too much jitter. So we're gonna see if, uh, if it's still jittery down at, down at crotch level. <laughs> uh, and I'm, uh, I have to make a pretty quick walk because I just listed my old televisions. Television's probably one of the first 4K TVs that ever existed. It's an old Samsung 4K TV. I listed it for 150 bucks and someone like instantly said, can I come look at it in like an hour? I'm like, sure. So they're coming over and I don't really have anything to hook up to it. Like I could show them like, you know, it turns on and the menus work and I don't even think the apps connect. Like Netflix's app is so outdated. I don't even think it connects to Netflix anymore. So, but you could still hook it up to like a Apple TV or you know, a fire stick or something. DVD player, if you still got one of those. Or just cable TV, whatever. It still works as like a, a display, but the smart TV functions of it aren't, aren't the best. And, and I did list it as a smart TV. I should have taken the smart part out because it's pretty dumb these days. It was smart. 15 years ago, whenever, it's probably not that old, it's probably 2010, 2011. It's pretty old. So if I get 150 bucks out of it, I, I kind of list things higher too on Mar Facebook Marketplace because everyone wants to negotiate. So if he offers me 100 bucks, I'll take it. I'll be like, well, the smart apps kind of are dumb, so I'll give you 100 bucks for it. Sold. Take my dumb TV. <clears throat> and yesterday I sold uh, my Emotiva seven channel amplifier for five hundred and twenty dollars. And I think I bought that two years ago for like five ninety nine. So I got got my money back out of it and the guy paid like $120 for shipping the thing weighed 36 pounds and I shipped it to Florida so I guess they're in in demand because that sold like the very next day I still have a uh, Emotiva uh, like a digital processor I'm not sure what you even call it I think that's what you call it. It's just what, what all the inputs and stuff hook up into. But it, it doesn't have like a built-in amp in it. So it's not like a digital tuner. But it's nice. Emotiva is a very good company that makes like high-end stuff that's relatively cheap considering how high-end high it is. Like it's competing against $5,000 units and they sell theirs for like $2,000. 
and I bought mine refurbished for like 1200 or 12.99 and I'm selling it for 8.99 so that one's I'm, I'm kind of taking a taking a little hit on but they already came out with like a, a new version of it that I saw people selling for like 9.99 on eBay so I would never get anywhere close to you know I'm not even gonna get 9.99 probably won't get 8.99 probably have to lower it down to 7.99 or 6.99 but whatever it'll it'll sell eventually and then I gotta work on selling my uh, guest bedroom stuff I got two king-size beds that need to go with frames box springs and frames and then uh, what else I got like a table <laughs> like my kitchen table I'm gonna hold on to that till the very end till I'm about till I sell my house I'm, I'm getting down to the very bare necessities and like all my kitchen stuff that I actually use my air fryer and all that stuff I'm getting down so what I've, I've been thinking is well step one is to actually make the trip to Southeast Asia go to Bangkok and see if I actually like it over there but I've watched you know 10,000 videos about Bangkok so I, I have a pretty good idea what I'm getting into <laughs> Uh, so I can't think of a reason why I wouldn't like it unless it there's some sense that I'm not being able to uh, experience over the video if it like smells like rotting flesh <laughs> everywhere rotting flesh just permeates no one talks about it no one mentions it ever I don't, I'm pretty sure that's not the case. You might get some uh, random sewage or garbage smells. But I, I have heard people say that the, the, uh, oops, I forgot to start my tracker. That things smell good. Like when they're walking through markets and they're cooking a bunch of food. I'm sure that smells amazing. And uh, that's coming up. My, I got a two week trip to lovely Niles, Ohio coming up for Thanksgiving. I'll be there the week of Thanksgiving and the week after. And that'll be cool. And that is it's like the week the week before Thanksgiving is my last week of work until January like 16th, whatever that Monday is in, in January, some whatever the closest Monday is to the 16th <laughs> in January it's like two months I got two months off work so it's it's like more than a vacation it's it's like a sabbatical because I'm mixing in like we get the week of Christmas off is just a holiday like I get like three or four people to volunteer to work the week of Christmas the same with like the week of or the two days of Thanksgiving we get off we get Thanksgiving off and like the day after Thanksgiving off and those are just like corporate holidays and so that week's just a free week off don't have to take any vacation or nothing and then I have floating holidays where I, I like volunteer to work 
on I think it was Martin Luther King Day, Memorial Day, Labor Day. And then you get to take those holidays that you worked, you get to take those days off whenever you want. So some of the, those days are thrown in there. And then we have, uh, I've got four weeks of just straight vacation. And then I've got two weeks of personal business time that you could use for anything personal business related. So my personal business is uh, going to Bangkok to inspect whether I will actually enjoy living there or not. That's my personal business. <laughs> And it's so like all, all that time together adds up to like basically almost two months off. It's like 50 some, 50 some days. And that's actual days, that's not work, work days off. I forget how many actual work days it is off. But it's around maybe five, four or five weeks. Long time. I always take pretty long vacations towards the end of the year. And they've almost always been spent going to Ohio. Or last year I spent six weeks in Ohio. But those I kind of, I worked from Ohio a lot of, a lot of the time. At least a couple weeks. But this time I'm just, no work. Oh, and since it goes into January, I'm taking, you know, it's this year's vacation plus like two weeks of next year's vacation. So that's how that's working out. Because I've already taken some vacation to go to Florida with Misty and her family. I went on a cruise. Where else did I go? Uh, I think that's the two main ones. I'm pretty sure I went somewhere else. I have to look back in my videos. Like this little long weekend trip to San Antonio. I did take one day off, a Friday off to go do that, to do SeaWorld and the zoo. <clears throat> so I've got a lot of R&R time this year and then when I get back from Bangkok like within a few weeks my friend Jason and his family they go to they go on a cruise so I made I might be ready for a, a vacation again to go on a cruise again <laughs> when I get back from Bangkok within a couple weeks work one week and be like oh my god I need another vacation. <laughs> so, another idea that I've been thinking about, if all goes well in Bangkok, and I do like it, I will start moving forward even faster with Operation Sell Everything get down to the the bare minimum and sell my house and probably move back to Ohio and stay with my mom just until like I mean it could be till the end of the year it's 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 really all depending on how uh Bitcoin and MicroStrategy performs over the next year. If it does perform the way I think it'll be perform, then I will be, I will not be needing a job anymore. <laughs> Which already, like I've run some numbers in selling my house, depending on how much I get out of my house. 
but I'm pretty much already kind of set. But if things go the way I think they're gonna go, then I'm like really set. <laughs> Man, it smells like smoke. When there's smoke, there's fire. Fire. <sighs> Horsies. I've not visited the horsies in a while. Put my phone in my bag. I got my little bag strapped onto my back. Onto my waist. That's what my camera's mounted to. It's also got my tea in it. Oh, and the other day, my last video that I made, when I I was drinking the uh, Gatorade that I mixed up after I stopped the video I was sitting there at the park bench I noticed there was mold in it <laughs> and I about yacked like a fuzzy white fuzzy mold speck on the inside of the bottle oh grossed me out and then i was afraid i was like gonna get sick but i didn't get sick <laughs> so I, I need to remember to go home and throw all those gatorades that i mixed up there in the fridge at least inspect them closely See if they got any, any of the other ones have any mold on them. My, my tea, I drink my tea so much. Like that Gatorade's been sitting in the refrigerator for like a month. Well, my tea, I, I make mini batches of Lipton tea per week. Probably like, like I make it in my coffee pot and I probably like to make 12 pots of tea a week. I drink a lot of tea. Black tea. We're on that sidewalk here. Mm. on over <sighs> yeah so if things go well which from what I've been studying things are gonna go very well for Bitcoin and for MicroStrategy even if even if Bitcoin stayed where it's at right now around 75, 76 thousand, which it won't. But I'm just saying, even if it stayed where it's at, MicroStrategy has all of these catalyst events coming up that's gonna boost their stock a lot. Like I can't give a number, but it's, it's gonna be silly. So the, the first one is, Later this month, they're getting evaluated to be added to the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 index. And they're eligible by market cap. They'll be like, you know, up above PayPal, I think. And, and they were like, the last video I made just like last week, they were at like a 45 billion market cap. And now they're at like 55 billion. So the higher, higher their market cap is, once they actually get indexed, the bigger the passive flow of stock buys are gonna be from all the people that own the QQQ index fund. So that's a big catalyst. That's the next one that's on the horizon. And 
the next big catalyst after that is in January, they're switching to, I think it's called FASB accounting rules, which I don't know if that's a new thing. I don't know much about FASB, but basically it, the new accounting rules that they'll be switching to allows them to report Bitcoin that they have on their balance sheet as an asset, which that's their main asset. <laughs> but there's been some reason why they can't report Bitcoin on their balance sheet up to now, like and some law changed or the SEC made some allowance to it to allow it. I don't I don't really know the whole whole backstory. But the end result is uh, MicroStrategy up till now has been reporting like losses every quarter, like negative, like the last one was like negative a dollar or something per share because they can't report the, the Bitcoin that's on their balance sheet as contributing to their, I don't know, whatever, quarterly report. So all that they're able to report is their software business, which they make like business intelligence software. That's, you know, they do a few hundred million a year, I think. It's, you know, not bad, but it's not great. It's not like, they wouldn't be getting into the QQQ or the S&P 500 just on their software business alone. So anyway, once they st are able to report the, their Bitcoin as an actual on their quarterly report, their earnings per share is going to go from like negative $1.75, whatever it was before, to like off the charts I don't even know what it'll be but it's they've already got 16 billion dollars worth of Bitcoin on their balance sheet that they've not been able to report so if you go look at like all the analyst reports that are just looking at their quarterly reports their their company looks like it's horrible <laughs> It's like, oh my God, why is the stock price going up and performing like this when, they, when you look at the reports and they're losing all this earning per share and they're, you know, diluting shares by you know, adding, adding new at the market shares every month or two. Like if, it, if any other company was doing that and there was nothing Bitcoin related, it would be horrible. And that's what their reports look like. They look horrible. If you look on like Fidelity or any like stock report that tells you whether, you know, a stock is like a good buy, MicroStrategy looks horrible. <laughs> it was like a 0 0.4 out of 10 on Fidelity from all the there automated anal analytics that Fidelity does to look at all the stocks and you know they look at earnings per share and growth and yada 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 and even like a like fintech analyst I saw on uh, Twitter like these guys that you know stock traders professional working on Wall Street stock traders and they watched the uh, MicroStrategy earnings report and they, they're like saying like you know they just think that the stock is so overvalued and they don't think that anything that Michael Saylor said has anything that is, is rooted in reality but they don't understand Bitcoin 
MicroStrategy has pioneered this by combining capital markets activity with Bitcoin as a treasury reserve asset. With the embrace of BTC yield and the BTC yield shows that, in fact, we acquired the capital in a manner that was accretive to our shareholders as opposed to dilutive. And that means when we're actually engaging in capital markets activity, we're doing it in an accretive velocity fashion. Um, so it's just, it sounds like a pyramid, uh, a Ponzi on top of a pyramid. Uh, but it works it, until it doesn't. It works until Bitcoin crashes, right? Um, so, so this is all right. Here's 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 the final word for for Michael Saylor for me. He said Bitcoin is growing fifty percent. We don't know what it will do in the future, but my personal long term view is over twenty one years, Bitcoin is going to grow twenty nine percent AOR. So that would mean I did some math here, Ben. That would mean that it, that Bitcoin will be at fourteen million dollars a coin. And it would have a 281, and I know there's like coins coming to market, so this is not a, this is not exact. 281 trillion dollar market cap, which sounds like a lot of money. Sounds like is that more than every all the assets in the world? Here's a stance for you. I don't believe this prediction. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I'm willing to go on a limb and say that. I'm guessing that's not going to happen. Um, yeah, just just uh, really fascinating. Like the largest. ATM equity issuance in the history of capital markets is being used by Michael Saylor to buy Bitcoin. I would think and, if Bitcoin grows working. at 10% per year over the next 21 years, you should be pretty happy. If it, if it just equates long-term stock market averages, I think that would be happy as a crypto person. It's wild. That's the thing. If you don't understand Bitcoin and you think Bitcoin is just a, you know, it's going to zero, it's a fad or... It's a scam. It's a Ponzi scheme. I think they might have even mentioned Ponzi scheme. <clears throat> then if you think that, then, then yeah, my, my strategy looks horrible. But if you actually understand Bitcoin and understand why the price of Bitcoin is going up and you understand the strategy that MicroStrategy is doing to use capital markets to, you know, take loans and and issue bonds, convertible debt bonds, and you know, basically, it's like a uh, what do they call it? It's kind of kind of like uh, what George Soros did when he was buying buying like one currency and trading it for another it's like a speculative attack on a currency that's what George Soros did and like made billions of dollars when he was doing that with the British pound or the euro hello Hi. so that's what Michael Saylor's doing with Bitcoin to the US dollar even though they would never say that they would never say it's a speculative attack on the dollar, but that's exactly what it is. It's taking loans and take, trying to get dollars in any way possible and then converting it to Bitcoin. And then the dollars devalue because the U.S. Treasury is issuing like 7% more dollars into the money supply. If you look at like the M2 money supply, it's somewhere around 7% a year. And the government prints like $1 trillion like every three or four months. That's how much additional money is being pumped into the, to the monetary system of the, U, the US dollar. <clears throat> and so that devalues every existing dollar. <sighs> That's the uh, monetary policy, deflation, inflation, in inflation rate. So if you actually understand all that stuff, then there's no way that Bitcoin can go down.
at least not as low as what you know every time it sets a new floor i went over that before so we'll see we'll see <laughs> we'll see if the professional stock traders are right and bitcoin is a ponzi scheme that's going to zero <laughs> or if uh bitcoin's the real deal and especially that's that's more catalyst that's not microstrategy specific but uh, donald trump and rfk both said that they want to put bitcoin have a strategic reserve of bitcoin and they've already submitted um, some senator from like montana already submitted a bill to have the U.S. government buy 200,000 Bitcoins a year for five years straight until they have one million Bitcoins in the treasury. So that alone, if that actually goes through and they follow through with their promise, which, you know, our Trump was kind of just giving lip service. I don't think he really cares about Bitcoin, but RFK was... When he, get, when he gave his speech at the Bitcoin conference, like he's studied Bitcoin. He knows what he's talking about. And I think Trump would do it just to, you know, Trump has launched his own Trump coin or whatever. So he has interest in making crypto, like deregulating it or not really deregulating it, but not attacking it, not trying to shut it down, which is what's been going on. Like, uh, <clears throat> just like a year ago, maybe within past year, <clears throat> there was a, a bill that got passed by the House and the Senate that would have allowed banks to hold Bitcoin on their balance sheets and Biden vetoed it. And uh, I think it's the SEC guy, Gensler, he's attacked, he's gone after cryptocurrencies and gone after people that are using it. And this, there's like lawsuits against Coinbase, there's lawsuits against Robinhood for them selling like what they call unregulated securities which is not bitcoin itself but it's other cryptocurrencies like meme coins and eth and solana i don't i don't mess with any other crypto besides bitcoin bitcoin is the original it's more accepted by the government <clears throat> you know there's an, an etf that's been issued for it so that's the other big catalyst that's been pushing Bitcoin up this year is they're actually an ETF, so pension funds are using it. I just saw there's these UK pension funds that have agreed to like allocate up to 3% into their pension funds. The Florida, uh, whatever he is, CF, the treasury guy of Florida, he wants to have Florida hold Bitcoin on their balance sheet. Montana's gonna do it. I think Michigan just allowed being able to pay taxes with Bitcoin. Like there's so many positive catalysts and there's gonna be more and more since the Trump administration is gonna be very friendly to cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin in particular. That Bitcoin's going to the moon and in turn, MicroStrategy is going to the moon. And all that's going to play out. <clears throat> so the, the next catalyst after that, that's in January, the FASB accounting rules. And then in probably June, July is when it could get added to the S&P 500 index. And that's huge. So S&P 500 index, like buy and VOO, like almost everyone owns the S&P 500 index in their 401ks, all the retirement accounts, 
and all that anytime anyone buys that etf or buys a mutual fund for the s p 500 that microstrategy would get passive income money that it would in turn turn around and buy bitcoin with so that would cause the shares microstrategy go up and in turn it would cause the bitcoin price of bitcoin to go up so my strategy and bitcoin are working in in tandem when bitcoin goes up microstrategy stock price goes up and when market strategy stock price goes up they get access to more money to buy more bitcoin which causes the price of bitcoin to go up which in turn causes the price of market strategy stock price to go up which you see what's happening you see what's happening here <laughs> oh, i posted a meme uh, it's like i'm gonna try this one more time and it's showing like all past three bitcoin cycles and where we are in the fourth cycle and you just see like you know the banana zone that we're we're just getting ready to go rocket to the moon within this next year and no one no one's no one's seeing it at least not the majority of people very small people like if you look at google trends mike strategy's not trending high Bitcoin, the interest of Bitcoin Google searches is not high. There's no mania. So, like, we're nowhere near the top. When we get towards the, you know, once we pass like 100,000, I think that's when more retail investors are going to start, you know, taking notice. And then everyone starts FOMOing in, fear of missing out. And that's when things just straight up vertical insane banana zone is what they call it it's when the chart looks like looks like a banana going, going, going straight up uh, makes my banana go straight up thinking about it <laughs> all right well that's all i got that was my quick little walk walk around the block that was two miles so if you're not paying attention, you should start. And that's all I got. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'll talk to you later. Take it easy.